Hey, hey, everyone. It is J and A from the Let's Get Loud podcast. I was like, it's the Let's Get Loud podcast. <laughs> I mean, it, I could have said it's the Let's Get Loud podcast with J and A, which is the name of the podcast, but it's J and A from the Let's Get Loud podcast. Hello, Alicia. Hello. This past weekend, I was talking to some people and uh, after my little speech, they were like, I need more of you. And I was like, well, lucky for you. <laughs> There's 500 episodes. <laughs> I said, uh, and you know what I like? It was like, I said it was, it's like easy to remember. I'm like, it's let's get loud. I'm like, let's get loud. Like the JLo song. So I hope that they will remember it oh, later on in life. Maybe they're listening right now. They're like, she's talking about me. Um, another thing happened where a friend of ours is going right back to our podcast. She's going like backwards. She like started now and then she's just going backwards. Okay. <laughs> she, she sends me this random message. She's like, I'm at the sex podcast. And I'm like, oh, don't remember that. <laughs> don't remember this one. She's like, you probably don't remember. It's like an old, old one where you guys are talking about sex and sex toys. I'm like, what? I don't even remember. Like, what I think that was like, saying? that was like our cat and nat era. When right. we were like, I, I feel like when we were like really listening to Cat and that. Yeah, and so we exactly. were just like feeling brave. Anyway, she sent me some sex toys uh, links because apparently on that podcast, I was looking for sex toys. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it was very interesting. I'm like, thank yeah. you so much. So, um, so that happened. Um, okay. Speaking of old podcasts, last week we had Tom Asacker. Um, and I personally just loved everything about it. I was like so nervous. And I felt, I feel like the beginning, it was like weird. Like, as in like, I'm like, I'm here with, and like, it's like, I couldn't like get English out, uh, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure he's used to it. We speak so much. Did you explain on the podcast how you two came to no, connect? I didn't. Could you tell us right now, I please, ma'am? Okay. So basically a member from your weight loss uh, sent me a message and she was just really connected connecting to my like I like started flirting with mindfulness and you could tell my coaching sessions were a little different in your way weight loss that was like last October I uh, know last August and even like our members were like whoa like I see a shift in your message but I see the passion right I really felt I really found my energy again and like kind of like where I was in my personal journey and that's what I do every Friday right so anyway so it like was the start of that shift in my messaging um on my Friday uh, lives or coaching sessions. And so she just reached out and was like, listen, I connect so much to your shift and everything you're saying is so connected to Brene Brown and Tom Asacker and whatever. And I was like, I didn't even know who Brene Brown was. Now I feel so sad that I wasn't, I didn't know who Brene Brown was because tons of people are like, it's like Mel Robbins. Like, how do you, you're in the mindset world and you don't know who this person is, but I mean, guys, it is what it is, right? It's what it's sells. a big world. Now I know, now I know. So I did fall into the Brene Brown and she's like, Brene Brown is a friend of mine and Tom Asacker is a friend of mine. So that's where I was like, whoa. And I like Googled who these people were and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, and I'm the type of person before when I wasn't being mindful where I'm like, sit, work, head down, you know, like not really like take time to go for a coffee date you know, with strangers. No, yeah. 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 But I really was like, Jose, this is an opportunity. You know, I started seeing potential and opportunities and and all of that, which is being mindful, right? Living in the moment, whatever. So I say yes. And you after, became like, a, a right little mindset slut date for a little while. For, yeah. I you were just like, like very who, much a slut. Yeah. You were like, who it's can I talk to? Who can yeah. I talk to? Who can I talk to? So anyways, so I end up meeting her and she's like, you know, I'd love for you to just like learn more about Tom. So I went into the Tom trap and, um, I got trapped for sure. Like it was just kind of, I connected so much. It basically our love to understand human behavior is very, that's where we connect. Like, honestly, where we connect, I mean, he's an American man. Like there's a lot of things that we do not connect on. No? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but where we connect is just our passion or our like curiosity in regards to human behavior and how we feel like society is being conditioned to behave a certain way. And like, we really feel that way. Both of us, that's where we connect. So I love that I said conditioned. I like had to use that word. I'm going to be using it because I feel like we say brainwashed, but it's not that it's like, we've just been conditioned to yeah. think that this is the right way to do things and that there is a right way to do things like just all of that. 
Uh, and I remember when you first had the, your conversation with him. I mean, imagine if you think in a certain way and you notice things that most people don't notice. Yeah. And then when you connect with someone that thinks the, the same way you connect, like you're like, yeah. finally, like yeah. someone is saying the words that I think and articulating what I've maybe not been able to articulate. Exactly. Or even just like, oh my God, you've also noticed. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, because even if I, if I talk to a stranger about what I'm noticing, they need to then experience the noticing so that yeah. they know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and so with him, it was like, he noticed what I noticed and I noticed what he noticed. And so he was also very, um, like same for him. He really enjoys our conversation. He's like, I rarely find someone that not only notices, but wants to do something about it. Right. So, right. So you can notice that we're all conditioned yet. You're still stuck in the conditioning and this is yeah. what you're using. This is what you yeah. want. You want the conditioning. Yeah. Whereas like, he's like, you're someone that wants to make a difference like I do. And I want people to wake up. And I was like, yes. Anyway. So, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, there's a few things that can, we actually like kept talking after. So we like had a, not a meeting, but like we kept, cause we hadn't spoke in a month. So I was like, what's up? Like, are you excited for your book? Like, um, so his book, you guys, like he said in the podcast, end of June, beginning of July. And I'll definitely like, make sure that you guys know what's up. I like read the whole thing. It's a very short book, but like I told Alicia about the book, I said, it's a concept, you know, it, it can't be, it's not like a story where there's a beginning and end and a, you know, point perturbateur and then like, there's none of that. Point perturbateur, that's I don't it. know what that means. Uh, it's that part in a book where it's like, point perturbateur. like, it's like, like in a movie, there's always a point de perturbateur. I don't know sure if I'm saying it right. There's something, there's a, a syllable missing. Um, like in a movie, there's always like, oh, this is where they like, there's a conflict. There's a problem and then they solve it. Know what I mean? You know, you watch a movie, they're all lovey dovey. You're like, what's going to be the point I felt too bad? Right. Like, okay. he keeps the girlfriend's back. Like, okay. there's always like, you know what I mean? And then they solve it. And then, okay. um, there's none of that. It's a very much like straight up his concept of the unwinding want, um, that we're conditioned to want certain things, yet we don't realize that. And then we live, oh, there's this thing that he said. And I was like, oh my God, literally in the book, I'm like, yes, we, mm -hmm. it's like, we don't even know that we're just living. A lot of people aren't even conscious that we live a full life of things. We don't, we say we don't want to be doing. So he's like, he said in the podcast, he said, like, I was talking to a friend and I, and I started from the day. Okay. So you wake up. I said, I'm going to go through your day. And every time you don't really want to do something, tell me. Like, you know what I mean? So he's like, you wake up. It's like, don't really want to do that. But okay, yeah, I have to. Then you go to work. Don't want to do that, but I have to. And it was just like, so your whole day is just full of things you claim you don't want to do, but you have to do. Um, and it was like very interesting how like, so you're just going to exist in this world where everything you do, you don't want to do, you have to do. And how it takes away from the like living, <laughs> like as in, you, but you want to do that. So then you're not getting, giving yourself that moment of like, but I want to do that. And I know why. And then there's less conflict, less stress, less like, you know what I mean? Less all of that, like uh, depression as well. Like imagine if you just live every fucking day, every day, everything you do, you, you say, I don't want to do that. Like no one, like, you know what I mean? Like just hiding behind, um, happiness basically like happiness will never come because you're never fulfilled you're always chasing it's just like a really good conversation anyways that was amazing. um <laughs> so hopefully you guys listen to it <laughs> so good um, he said something something about rushing he's like stop rushing and it was like uh, it made me connect to weight loss i'm like why he said okay because i want to write the inconvenient woman, right? Like I want to write that concept, that like idea of like being inconvenient and not being depend, like independent. It's not the independent woman. She's actually very dependent. <laughs> she uses her resources. She fucking says what she wants. She like, she's inconvenient to the way we've been conditioned to be. All right. So anyway, so I'm saying this and he's like, don't rush it. Like, don't like, why are you rushing? Let the energy flow. Why are we rushing through life? Why are we romanticizing about the future? And also how it's all a friggin it, we're delusional to think that we're all going to live till we're 85. Like, as in, we just like think that that's what's going to happen. And we live according to that 
standard or that belief. And you don't know that, like we're living towards that, but we don't know that. And so there's a lot that we do um, that we don't notice. That is all about what we've been conditioned to believe about ourselves and what we should accomplish in life. Uh, thinking, it makes us feel comfortable to think that we're going to live till we're 90, you know, because um, it's uncomfortable to think otherwise, but it is reality. And um, so it's just like, uh, obviously I love this whole like universe of, the truth behind whatever. So rushing through weight loss, it got me thinking like, if you're rushing, he said, if you're rushing to write this book, it, then it's not flowing. It's not, it's like, c'est forcé, c'est pas, it's not really what you want. Like, as in like, it's not, you're just like forcing some random things in there. And I was like, oh, like, like when JK Rowling had to write book number four of Harry Potter because it became a hit and she had to just do it. And it's just the quality decreased significantly yeah, because the energy, the passion, the, the flow wasn't there. And it was like, you need to have this book finished by whatever. Whereas the first book, I, I don't know how long it took her, but like she just, and it was passion, you know? Yeah. And there was like a, like he said, like it took him, it's 140 pages. I think this book. And he's like, why did it take me a year to write this book? Right. And he's like, because I needed it to just like flow and I needed to live experiences and I needed to be like, oh, what? wait, that's not true. I need to, to live the book and then be like, oh, that doesn't work out anymore. Like I need to change a few words here for it to make sense. And so he's like, don't rush it. Don't like it can take, and, and I'm good with that. I know you've said that. I'm like, I'm good at not rushing things and just like really taking my time and being more safe. Uh, but at the same time, it's not about being safe because safe of what? Like, it's like, so holy shit, you know, and um, there's like, a just balance there. There, there's a balance there. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It comes... yeah. It's not procrastinating, you know, no. it's actually being very intentional about taking your time. So I was thinking about weight loss and I'm thinking it's so true huh? how we're rushing to get where to get what. And then if it's not, I truly believe that weight loss, uh, health, wellness, happiness, it can all just like, it's finally you being you and letting that energy flow of like, I'm just going to show up finally where I am literally doing what I want and not creating the life I want, but living it. Like, it's not about what's coming in then. And, and I'll do that then when I'm there thinking that's a delusion it's it's we're delusional to think that that we're gonna be at a certain place or it's gonna take a certain amount of time for us to lose 20 pounds like today <laughs> I know uh, and letting that that flow like and I still see it with humans um that we're like but what do I do today holy shit get up and live li live the way you want to live like and and I think people that makes people uncomfortable and that concept of losing weight in that way is so different than what they've ever experienced or tried that it's like they don't believe in the process of just following that they don't think it can be that enough. easy yeah it can't be enough as well and here's the thing he was like we've been and I said why are people struggling to trust themselves because that is a it's literally a problem of trust it's a relationship with yourself you don't trust yourself you don't trust yourself that you're going to make it work, that it's going to work, that you can this way, that you can just show up and it's going to be enough for whatever we've been. And he's like, we've literally, literally conditioned society. Like we are all conditioned to believe, to, to not trust ourselves. Like he said, when you're young, you trust yourself until parents take that away. Like, as in like, you're too young. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do this you're, you're going to, you're going to get hurt. It's going to go bad. Like we don't let them be curious un until they do it in our backs or whatever. And then we're like, uh, they got hurt because they're kids and they don't know physics of, you know, going up a tree and jumping, but you know what I mean? And we're like, no, don't jump. You could break a leg. And then this, and then, you know, um, which is like obviously a part of our, our responsibilities, but there is a place where we put fear in our children of what could happen that hasn't happened because we're adults and we know what could happen, uh, but we don't let the flow of the, the, of just like being and not worrying as much of like what, you know, just like all of it. We do a lot of that. And and, I know and we do it with our children. We all, we, and we do it with ourselves, but maybe not <clears throat> as aggressively or 
we stop ourselves from having experiences oh my out God. of fear. Oh, yes. Of like what could happen. Exactly. Like I'm going to stop my kid from having the experience of climbing the tree because they might break their arm. Yeah. But I'm, 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 you know, that's neither good nor bad, but I'm 100% preventing them from having that experience. Yeah. 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 And here's the thing. Also, we've been so conditioned that if you can tell me what the future is, then, then I'll do the thing. It's like, we, we, um, we really connect as humans, like to feel safe. So that's why I'm like, if I promised that, people say, I don't have money for your weight loss. I'm like, if I promised you $20, would you find 20 pounds? Would you find the money? And they're like, well, yes. Ah, I see. I see what's happening. They want that people, that, they want that reassurance. And, and life, life is and so the weird. unknown. So like, I, am someone, I don't, I don't, I think everyone struggles with levels of anxiety. I think that is a normal human yeah. reaction. Some people have it more irrationally, more frequent, more intense. One, something that I struggle with, with anxiety is the unknown. And so if I don't know what it's going to look like and feel like, and what I'm going to have to do that gets me right even like physical locations if I've like never been there before where will I park all of the unknown I think that's pretty common and I think that's part of it for people they're like well it's the unknown like if you can't tell me that I'm gonna lose 20 pounds and if I've never I know what counting calories feels like that's the known for me so sometimes we choose the known over the unknown just because it's familiar oh yes mm-hmm not yes. and, and it's not going to get us what I want, but I'm going to choose it because it's familiar. But here's the thing, everyone. And I give us the pep talk. Yeah. Here's the thing. Everything is unknown. Like, like our whole life is unknown. The, the fact that you think you can plan the future is actually just us trying to keep ourselves comfortable in an idea that that's how it's going to go. In my mind, my mom's going to die when she's 97. She could literally die tomorrow. Okay. So like, I think I'm going to live till I'm whatever. I could literally die tomorrow, but it's the, the comfortable in making this, no, this is not reality. The, the, the shit that we say, like no one can, no one knows the future. So if someone is guaranteeing you anything other than the breath that you take next though, that's, that's, it's bullshit. But they, what they're doing is they're, we've been conditioned to, feel this way and to think we have control. We like that, but we really do not. And here's the thing. Once you can embrace that, you can literally more embrace living because you're here right now. This is all that is true. I always say that. What's the truth right now? Right now, this is the truth. I've said this yesterday about something else as well. I said, we get nervous and anxious about like, what if that happens? I'm like, what is the truth today? is all that is true though, that we cannot create scenarios. Right. Um, and it stops when we create scenarios, it actually, we stop living like, as in like living in this very moment of what is true and what I need to do right now. And we stop creating relationships, which is what life is about. It's about creating relationships. Um, and we've been conditioned to believe that life is about making money, doing more, being more, um, having more. And it really is just like, I love when he said this, I don't know if he said it on the podcast or in our conversation after, but he's like, we are born and we die. That is all that is like, what is true in between. We've been conditioned to create a life that is going to make us feel a certain way, whatever. And clearly that is not what has happened in this world. Like we've, we're all, we're, this is the world, like, let's look around. This is the world we've created. The world that we're all like scared of that people say like, what is this world we live in? The world we've been conditioned to like be, how to be in this world. If we were just like all, working on relationships and living our lives and making enough money to just be and do like, you know what I mean? No, like that's not the world we're, we're living in at right now at all. So at the end of the day, we can't change the whole fucking universe. But I, I told him like his perspective and like his concept has really shifted a lot in my life, in my perspective and the amount of anxiety or stress or whatever and I just like, I've never felt so like I exist, like it's sassy weird, no, but like I exist and this like is just that like connection. connection. Between, yeah. <clears throat> but like that, I, like I'm alive, like just that, just 
because like one day I won't be. And I know it's like, it's like weird. It's like such a weird conversation because it's not a conversation you have every day. Um, but let's keep that conversation alive because it does so much good. It really does. Right. And, and I see myself making decisions for relationships more than for money or for whatever. Like I, sometimes I see myself, I'm like, why stress about that? That's going to create a good relationship. That's going to create good, like a good feeling. And it feels right. You know what I mean? But it's hard because we're conditioned like to very go, go, go. Like we need this, we need to save. And like, let's be real. I live with someone that's very, mm. so it's like, that's why I'm like, <laughs> I said this before we started recording. I'm like, like, but he's still very much, I'm like impressed sometimes and surprised by how he was a little bit ahead of me where I was more scarcity. I was more, I needed more work with stress and anxiety than Jeff, let's be real. Yeah. Um, you know, and even when it came about money, he was still like, what are, what's the rush? Like, where are you going? And why are you worried? And like, what's, you know, what do you want? Um, and it's like very interesting. It's very, just this whole thing. He's been like supportive. Like clearly I don't tell him all of the deep, thoughts that I have <laughs> so Jeff I'm in a relationship a zoom relationship with this 70 50 year old, year old 50 year old 70 I don't know American how. man <laughs> oh my goodness well we love you taking us along the ride of this mindful read this book read this book it's so it's such a quick read I, I read it in like two days what was his first book that you read again uh the business of belief and that's where he like talks about um, how beliefs shape our lives, right? Um, and that desire shapes our belief, right? So what we desire, we believe in, and then our beliefs shape our actions and our behaviors. Um, but then he's like, but if we know that we're not doing the actions we want, then why are we desiring that? Like if we know I'm not doing my behaviors are not getting me the life I want, the happiness I want, whatever. It means that we're desiring that life. Why? Because it's desire that drives our behavior. Why do we desire not being successful? Why do we desire staying put, you know, and then questioning that? Like, why am I, and it feels uncomfortable because you're like, there's no way this is what I want. And you're like, well, why do you keep doing it? <laughs> You desire this outcome. You know this outcome. You feel comfortable. That's that's a big conversation. That's something that uh, that comes up often with people. So that you know, I think you guys would enjoy giving yourself the opportunity to think about that. Oh yes, yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. just go into it not being like this is gonna fix me. Giving just say go into it. This is the opportunity. I'm giving myself the opportunity to think a little bit differently to reflect. Right. And listen, guys, why was I all of a sudden interested in change, like doing this or practicing this or whatever you want to call what I'm doing um, is because I felt like I was always chasing more, 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 not in my personal life, but business. It was never good enough. I was whatever. And I was tired. I was tired of being disappointed. I was, I, I felt like that there's no way this is it. Like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. So you could be feeling that way about your personal life you, in your relationship in your whatever. For me, it was that. And then it just like really went down and it really helped me. Like I was tired of feeling anxious, disappointed, sad about my business results. And I was like, Hey, how can I work on that? Because I, I don't want to keep hustling all the time and thinking I'm not enough. Right. So um, and just because, and here's the thing he said, and I said, me really shifting my perspective, going for the flow of like, what really fuels me, what I'm really good at, what really makes me happy, which is speaking. Right. I'm like, look at all the gigs I got from just like letting it flow, doing my thing, letting it be. And he's like, here's the thing. People think that they're, if they let go of like the grind, the motivation, everything's going to fucking crumble and it won't, it won't. And he's, he even give the example. He's like, you know, when you finally decided you weren't going to make supper for your family, did everyone starve? Did everyone like, no, no, nothing happened. You, things just like, it just like, oh, it's going to fix itself. And it really did. I mean, my mom calls, Hey, do you guys want to come here? Perfect. Great opportunity. Let's do that. Um, it's just like, it kind of like happens. You kind of figure it out as you go daily, right? Don't plan the whole, whatever, but daily. Oh my God. Anyways, it was just amazing. So much to say. So much to say. Okay, let's give them the pep talk that we gave on our live. We did an amazing live on Instagram and people enjoyed it. 
They did. They really did. Yeah. Um, it was more like a summer tip pep talk um, because it's we're coming into a time where there's we have like two major tips that I think is going to help everyone um, manage their surplus calorie, whatever, just their journey. And it's a really good way to approach summer um, intentionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Summer is one of those times that maybe you guys have already kind of, you know, had the whisperings of thinking of like, if you're on a weight loss journey or not, or like, how am I not going to gain 20 pounds this summer? You know, how, how is, how is summer going to coexist with my weight loss goals or weight goal, weight management goals? I'm sure many of you have started to have those thoughts and you're thinking about barbecues and pool parties and your vacation and, you know, drinks on the patio. And just like, before we give you guys some tips, I need you to just like breathe mm -hmm. and remind you that like, you're on this earth to enjoy the most beautiful life. Yeah. So please stop thinking that those experiences cannot exist with your goals. Like number one, you need to be like, okay, I need to think differently about this. It's not all or nothing. It's not gain a bunch of weight or do the things. They can be together. They can be one. Yeah. Um, and a way for you to intentionally show up and give, give attention to what Alicia was just saying, like you want to give attention to your life, right? And it's very connected to what the conversation we just had. You want to give attention to your life. Like it's since when do we need that reminder? But like we do like give attention to the life that you're living and don't just like live in this world where you think that this is what everyone like, nah, like you literally are on this earth. Like sometimes it's like like we're going back you exist and you're creating and making sure that you are alive like you are awake so do it okay so with that here are two ways to 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 do that while feeling intentional with what you you're consuming and you're listening to giving attention to what you want for your body and how you um feed your relationship with your health and your wellness um first thing in-betweens matter. So that's a great sentence to remind, like to just like keep repeating to avoid the all or nothing because uh, there's a lot of all or nothing that happens in the summer because literally weight loss programs or even the diet industry kind of disappears in the summer. Like they're like, okay, peace out. See you in September, right? Because you don't want to do anything like, uh, you know, you don't want to do anything right now. And that's where we're different, right? Like we're trying, we're creating tools to help our, our members stay connected, be intentional, put attention to what they want because it can really coexist and quite be quite easy, honestly. Um, so in betweens matter, just remind yourself in between bites, in between meals, in between days, in between vacations, like in betweens matter. So it's just, it's simple, but it's clear. You get it, you know? And my top strategy is always portions. Yeah, portions. So yeah. just, you know, reminding yourself that when you're at the barbecue, there's a difference between a handful of chips and the whole Costco size bag of chips. And one going and having a, a burger and having two burgers and a hot dog, like yeah. one beer and 17 beer. So just not, we, we, I'm, I think me, I'm worse for this for sure than you and have had to work on this more, but just connecting, not just certain foods, but certain experiences mm -hmm. with weight gain. Mm. And just like, well, it's, it's like, I don't walk into a barbecue in someone's backyard and gain two pounds. Yeah. Like no, it's my yeah. choices. Yes. And so really reminding yourself that you literally have layer upon layer upon layer of choice. And it's all about creating that relationship with like your life, your health, food. Like when you're there, why is it all about like eating all the things and like you're at a barbecue, talk to your friends. That's what life is about, right? It's about like living. And I was like, I felt like I needed it. It was like such a good time for me because we're recording this early, you guys. So it's before my, um, my uh, Italy trip. So right now, while you're listening, I'm in Italy and I'm, I'm coming back tomorrow, but, um, yeah, I, it was before it's right before. And I was putting some, you know, a lot of thought on like what I weigh right now. And like, before I leave and like, and really obviously talking myself out of that, that pattern, like not Jose, like whatever, but my meeting with him, uh, and, and doing the podcast and reading his book. It was like, I am going to be so fucking present and just like this and not worry about the kids, not like 
existing, living, like I really want to embrace everything I feel right now on that trip. So I'm going to, and that's reminders, right? You have to like, it's a way to be, it's a way to think like it doesn't just, and as you do it, it becomes way more naturally, but like natural, but like, it's been a year though. It's going to make a year in August that I have like, I am now shifting my thought process, my focus, my whole existence to this and really just keeping the conversation alive. It's not just one book. It's not just one podcast. It's really keeping that conversation alive because it feels good because it feels right. And I, and I've been very honest and vocal about like, you know, that, that day that I had two mentors or two meetings, one made me feel like shit. The other one made me feel really good. One would make me more money. This one does not make me more money. And I follow, I was like, I need to follow the flow of where my heart, like where it feels like I'm more alive and more important. And it, you know, my existence is more like valued. Um, and that's where, that's the route I took. You know what I mean? I could have taken another route, but it's like, I knew this is where I was. So if this feels good, if this feels right, stop avoiding that and then be back conditioned to motivation, discipline, let's go. Like stay in this lane. This is a lane that feels good for you. There is no weight to weigh there is no way to look there is no money to be made like you know like there is not none of that we've been conditioned to believe that we should look a certain way everyone is what they are you know what I mean live a certain way and we're just so busy on that hamster wheel searching for the smaller body the bigger paycheck the nicer house that we're not actually pausing to enjoy mindfully our current life yeah and isn't that what this is about like making enough to live the life that you want to live now, not romanticizing and actually believing that we're all going to make it to retirement and just sit there and just do finally what we'd like to be doing now. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, he has this like really good example of like the fisherman and the businessman. And like the fisherman went to go fishing, did his money, comes home, whatever. And like the person at the dock is like, oh, wow, you got like really good fish. Why didn't you get more? He's like, because I got enough. And then I can, the rest of the time I can enjoy, I'm just going to come back when I need more. What I'll do is I'll just enjoy whatever I got and then I'll come back and then I can enjoy my family, my, my relationship, like whatever. And then the businessman is like another 20 years, I'll make this amount of millions and then I'll enjoy my family. But at the end, he just did the same thing as you. He didn't grind for 20 years and lose maybe the wife, the husband, the whatever. He probably ended up with a divorce. It probably did. Right. And then at the end, he's the one fishing, enjoying, but this guy did that his whole life. You know what I mean? Like, so at the end, we're just getting at the same plot at the same place, but I spent 20 years not doing that. Okay. We're just one minute uh, away, but holy shit. Um, you see how much like, I'm like, ah, oh, I just like love it. Live, live a beautiful summer life. You guys yes. just go into yes. the summer with yes. the goal of enjoying and being yes. mindful and, yes. and the experience of summer. Yeah. And let that energy flow and it's going to be enough. Like you're not going to lose your shit because you're going to be present because you're going to like prioritize, not prioritize, but uh, develop and create a good relationship with your health. Like do it for that. Okay. Okay. Bye leash. Bye.